Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Launcher One successfully completes engine tests. Legislation may positively affect corporate aircraft management services. European pilots commit to safety reporting. I'm Bree Cross, it's October 2nd, 2015, and this is Airborne Unlimited. The Launcher One team reports in a Virgin Galactic press release that they have been making steady progress on all of the key components of their dedicated small satellite launch vehicle. The test reached steady state operation and allowed the team to capture high quality data about the engine during startup, operation, and safe shutdown. It occurred the same week as multiple full duration firings of the gas generator for Launcher 1's upper stage engine, each exceeding six minutes in duration. Launcher 1's orbital flights are achieved using two rocket engines, a single 73,500 foot per pound thrust Newton 3 main stage engine, and a single 5,000 foot per pound thrust Newton 4 upper stage engine. Both the Newton 3 and the Newton 4 are described as highly reliable rocket engines designed, tested, and built by Virgin Galactic. They say there is much work yet to be done, but they are excited to share the news about such encouraging test results along the road to space. It's hoped that federal legislation will cure what appears to be double taxation being imposed by the IRS when aircraft owners use an aircraft management service. U.S. Senators Sherrod Brown and Rob Portman have introduced legislation clarifying that aircraft management services are not subject to air transportation taxes. The legislation is in response to a March 2012 IRS Chief Counsel opinion that concluded aircraft owners employing aircraft management services and allowing the use of the aircraft for occasional charter operations should assess the 7.5% commercial ticket tax on amounts paid for those management services. National Air Transport Association President and CEO Thomas L. Hendricks issued a statement saying in part, quote, NATA appreciates the leadership of Senators Brown and Portman in addressing this issue of great importance to aviation businesses. Clarifying that aircraft management services are not subject to federal air transportation taxes will prevent the double taxation of aircraft owners who seek to defray the costs associated with ownership through the chartering of the aircraft, end quote. After the break, reporting errors without punishment improve safety. The KSN 770 is an affordable, WAS-enabled, integrated MFD with a flexible hybrid user interface from Bendix King. Get your fingers on the 770's perfect blend of touchscreen and hard buttons. Easily control your GPS navigation, navcom, weather, traffic, and terrain in any condition. For more information, go to BendixKing.com. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. AML's patent-pending wireless induction charging system eliminates confusion over those charging cables, cuts down cockpit cable clutter, and allows you and your passengers to fly cordless and eliminate the cable nightmare. www.aviationmodificationleaders.com There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. European pilots have joined aviation stakeholders in signing the European Corporate Just Culture Declaration at a high-level conference on saving lives with safety information in Brussels. The declaration is a commitment from wide parts of the sector to cooperate at company level to encourage pilots and other safety professionals to report safety occurrences without fear of reprisals. European Cockpit Association President Captain Dirk Pilexic said in part at the signing ceremony, quote, Behind this signature stands the European pilot's firm commitment to work with other stakeholders to improve the reporting of occurrences at company level. Such reporting, however, will only be encouraged if it takes place in a just culture environment based on mutual trust. He added, at its core, just culture is pretty simple. People make honest errors, and punishing them for this will make them stop reporting such errors. We will therefore continue to actively honor our commitment made today, 
and do all we can to pave the way for a more open and transparent system of reporting errors. It's Friday and that means that it's time for ANN CEO and Editor-in-Chief Jim Campbell to check in with his weekly barnstorming commentary. This time, Jim asks, is it time to panic about the decline of sport and general aviation? Here's this week's barnstorming. Thanks, Brian. Hi, folks. I had an interesting incident related to me. I'm not going to name names on this because I'm sure it was just the usual nonsense that occurs between competitive publications, but uh, a friend of mine related how uh, myself and Aero News and some of our coverage were being criticized as being the chicken little of aviation. The sky was falling, or that there were negative things. Now, we in no uncertain terms tell the truth about a lot of things. Some of them are good, some of them are bad. We love celebrating the great and we don't hesitate from exposing the bad. And we're taking tremendous efforts to try to bring all these things together into one cohesive synergistic set of coverage that allows everybody to be able to get all the truth and take it for themselves and, and digest it and decide what's right. But the problem is this, it's long past time to quote unquote panic or be worried about the state of aviation. Our numbers have been declining for quite some time. I dare you to make a cross country, coast to coast, stop every hour or two at an FBO and see how many of these FBOs, especially the smaller ones, are just dying on the vine or how many of the larger ones are getting swallowed up into some big conglomeration that now wants 50 bucks for you to come in to use the men's room. Uh, what happened to sport in general aviation? What happened to even the, the lightest machines, the ultralights, the experimentals? When we started working on a new sport plane resource guide, we found out a couple of things that were really interesting. One, the remaining manufacturers were very few, all things considered, and two, the folks that were there couldn't be bothered to, uh, at this point, even respond to certain things because they were too busy scratching out a living what little there was. The whole industry is trying to make as much as they can out of an increasingly smaller pie. And yet many of the associations and certainly the publications, especially the ones who, you know, every aircraft flies off the drawing board as if it was the greatest thing since canned beer. I love reading jet reports that have no qualitative handling or performance data, just, uh, you know, a request by the writer to find better words to describe how wonderful the whole thing is. That's just not good journalism. Telling the truth means that the good comes with the bad, but most important, we're facing reality. Folks, this is a great business. It's a phenomenal culture. It's an extraordinary community. And God knows to tell the truth, we have really gotten hammered for it. But there's no chicken little here. Telling the truth means that you look at things squarely, explain the good, explain the bad, and give you all enough information to decide for yourself. But more important than anything else, when you see what's wrong, fix it. When you see what's right, expand upon it. But most of all, come together as a community. Don't play chicken little. Don't play everything's wonderful. But look at things realistically. So we'll take the flack if everybody wants to call us negative. But most important, look at what we've said and remember one thing. It's the truth. Yeah, it's time to panic just a little or maybe just a lot. But the plain fact of the matter is this. We have an industry that needs help. It needs the truth. And it needs us all to face the facts. For the Aero News Network, Airborne and Aero TV, I'm Jim Campbell. We'll see you later. After these messages, Soloy Aviation names a new CEO. Concorde's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Now certified, Aspen Avionics single band ADS-B, ATX100 and ATX100G transceivers are the next gen ADS-B solution that provides the features pilots need while keeping flyaway costs low. Check it out now at aspenavionics.com. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, 
Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. A management change has taken place at Soloy Aviation Solutions as James H.L. Cohen has been appointed as the President and Chief Executive Officer. They reported Cohen brings a strong engineering track record and a passion for aviation to his new leadership role. The International Council of Air Shows has announced that Yvonne Camus will deliver the keynote address for their 2015 ICAST convention. She is a Canadian adventurer who participated in and finished the Eco Challenge Expedition race on the South Pacific island of Borneo. India's Ministry of Defense has finalized its order with Boeing for production, training, and support of Apache and Chinook helicopters. India will receive 22 AH-64E Apache attack helicopters and 15 CH-47F Chinook heavy lift helicopters. Dallas-based FlexJet has taken delivery of its first Legacy 500 business jet, according to a news release from Embraer. FlexJet said they are thrilled to bring the innovative Legacy mid-size cabin solution to the market starting this month. The California Science Center will present an in-depth look at the hazards as well as the possibilities for human space exploration. They are featuring a program called A Journey to Space Exhibition and 3D Film, opening October 29th and continuing through May 8, 2016. Well, that's our trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. Denver International Airport and the FAA are partnering to raise awareness about safe unmanned aircraft operations. The agencies teamed up on a public service announcement that will run on the video towers in the airport's main terminal. The PSA uses the No Drone Zone slogan to drive home the point that flying an unmanned aircraft near a manned aircraft is illegal and dangerous. It refers viewers to the FAA's Unmanned Aircraft website and to the knowbeforeyoufly.org website for further information and guidance on flying unmanned aircraft safely and responsibly. The PSA will air for two weeks surrounding the winter holidays, a time when many people will be getting drones as gifts. Denver will also post the PSA on the airport website so it will reach travelers every day of the year. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource. Have a wonderful weekend and we will see you on Monday.